Dr. Daniel Bober is a child and adolescent psychiatrist, and he joins me now. Doctor, good morning. Uh, you know, the question good morning, that How I are think, you? good morning, good to have you with us. You know, you. You, you listen to this story and you just ask yourself, what kind of world are we living in? Uh, that, that these three kids sit on a porch and watch someone jog by and say, let's go get in the car and go shoot this man. What's going on? You know, it is heartbreak, uh, heartbreaking and it is hard to understand, but uh, sometimes teens act in a way which makes no sense. They don't have the same degree of control or planning over their behavior that adults do. And while in no way that absolves them of responsibility for this despicable crime, it sort of explains what's going through their mind. A lot of times they just sort of act on impulse and don't think it through. I mean, I, I, you know, I find that hard. And I think a lot of people find it hard to understand. And it makes you wonder what desensitizes them to this point. What makes them lose empathy to the point where they're willing to cut this young man's life short. Uh, here from Australia, playing baseball. His girlfriend, his American girlfriend, had just been with him for three weeks visiting and meeting his family and friends over there. He had his whole life ahead of them. Where is the lack of empathy coming from in these teenagers? Well, there are certain individuals that we know that we call sort of antisocial or psychopaths or sociopaths, and those are people that don't have respect for human life, uh, that violate the rights of others and lack empathy, as you said. Uh, it's too early to tell really that's, if that's the case with these teenagers, uh, but we do know that some of them did have a history of this type of uh, criminal behavior in the past. So I'm not sure if something was wrong with their moral compass or where their parents were, were or well, that's, if they were being supervised. Well, those are the questions that come to mind. You know, you think about their right. families. We don't know much about their families at this point. I know one of the boys' mothers uh, was very upset and, you know, obviously uh, uh, couldn't believe that her son would be capable of this they all want uh, them to uh, you know plead not guilty they they think there's more to this than, than we know and we're just beginning to scratch the surface here but the things that come to mind are you know video games dysfunctional families leadership guidance all of these things detachment that may be created by social media by by a world where you grow up texting and, and playing games where you can kill people and it doesn't really mean anything. Uh, do you believe that those things are factors in any of this? Well, you know, in 2005, the Supreme Court case Roper v. Simmons looked at the execution of those under 18. And what we know is that those under 18 don't have the same cognitive capacities as adults do. They don't have the same ability to plan and organize their behavior or exercise restraint. Now, certainly, uh, in terms of video games, uh, there are plenty of kids who grow up in good homes that play violent video games and they don't go out killing people. So I don't think that video games are necessarily a factor. I think, as you said, there's multiple factors involved here that really need to be addressed. What concerns you? You know, when, when you look at the world today because you know I thought of Newtown when I thought of this story because that senseless ability to cut down the life of somebody who has done nothing to you who is completely innocent has had no impact on your life at all uh, it, it just makes you worried it makes you fearful about the future of the country and, and the kind of things that we see happening frankly it makes me sad because in a lot of ways I feel like we've really lost our way. Uh, we turn on the TV and we see these types of crimes all the time now. And of course it's so many different things. It's not one thing. It's the structure of our families. It's guns. It's the lack of mental health care. There's so many factors that play into this and it's really hard to pin it down on one thing but it, it is very, very sad. Doctor, thank you. Dr. Daniel Bober, we're going to talk more about this. Thank you, Martha. Uh, as we, good to have you here. Many thanks. Uh, as we thank go you. through the morning, it is just a, a, a horrific, brutal story. More coming up on that.